we exist to make advertising more valuable to the world, which we do through a combination of creativity, data, technology, media, um, and amazing people who work together to create advertising experiences that are more relevant, more additive, more respectful, and we ultimately think more sustainable. Essence is a global organization with over 2,500 people. Technology is the lifeblood of the organization, so all of those uh, people are using technology every day. Essence really fosters a culture of innovation throughout the organization. We think about, well, what is the intent of that media? And then we run experiments uh, to see what was the actual impact by connecting up all of the different platforms that we're working with and the partners that help us to bring that data together for us to analyze and synthesize what are the insights that we can take forward to run better advertising. Data alone won't make advertising more valuable to the world. It's also important that it sits alongside creativity. What clients are buying into, they're buying into those people and that culture. Data is at the fundamental heart of everything that Essence does. Please welcome to the stage Executive Vice President for Essence, Ian Niven Bowling. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Ian and I work for a company called WPP. It is one of the world's largest marketing services companies and it has about three and a half thousand companies that are within it. Uh, and WPP is going through a bit of a transformation itself. Uh, today I'm going to tell you a story about one of the companies within that called Essence. Um, but before I do that, um, I just wanted to do a quick call out that this is not going to be a presentation about data, right? You've heard a lot about data already, but this presentation is about people. And within WPP, there's about 130,000 of us, right? And those people manage about a third of the world's media. So if you think about it, one in every three ads that you see, we're managing. We're running the creative campaigns for the largest brands in the world, Ford, Unilever. We run all of Google's advertising. Um, so it's a pretty huge organization. Now. Before I go into the story um, with an essence, I want to talk to you a bit about the industry, right? And I'm sure most of you will feel that this is intuitively right. Um, there are some serious trust issues in the advertising industry. Um, and I'm going to focus in on two areas. Um, and the, the first area is TV. Uh, TV historically has been the biggest form of communicating with consumers. But what we're seeing today is a huge shift. So if you, like me, watch Netflix, go into Amazon, you're looking at Apple, you're making a choice. You're making a choice not to be interrupted with ads. You're making a choice that you get to watch the content when you want to. Um, and this is great, because we're in a privileged position to be able to do that. Um, but it's having a real impact on the rest of the industry. So if you think about um, those types of services, in the next five years, you'll see that market grow to about $25 billion, uh, which is a 64% growth in where it is today. But if you think about companies like Comcast and AT&T, they're seeing a decline in their cable and satellite businesses. Um, and so over that same period, we're going to see their revenues drop by about 16% to about $84 billion. Uh, and so this is just one example of where the shift is happening. You see it as well with ad blockers. People are blocking more ads. They don't want to be disruptive. Um, and it's because people have this, this real underlying kind of trust issue with advertising. And it's just compounded by things like Cambridge Analytica, right? Uh, this, is, this is something where, you know, the hood was opened up on an organization that was using data in a really bad way, right? It was starting to influence people's behaviors in a way that they didn't want to. Uh, and this is something that governments are now starting to look more seriously at, right? So in the past, advertising, especially digital advertising, was it's still unregulated, right? Um, but you've got things like GDPR, CCPA, HIPAA, e-privacy, and these are all things that are trying to bring control back to individual privacy. Now, we believe that individual privacy is a right, right? We don't want people's data to be misused. Um, but it still makes it very challenging. Advertising has been about trying to create connections between brands and consumers. 
And you know, over the last 10 years, we've been trying to make those connections on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But because of this pervasive behavior of some organizations, that kind of world is disappearing, and it's making it more and more challenging. So it goes without saying that if you're operating in advertising right now, it's a tricky time. Um, but it's not all doom and gloom. So about four and a half years ago, uh, I was lucky enough to stumble across an agency called Essence. Uh, the founders of the business believed that they could make advertising more valuable to the world. And the way that they believed they could do this was by creating a symbiotic relationship between consumers, brands, and publishers. And by doing this, they can create a continual virtuous cycle, um, which was good for everybody, right? So it was trying to do good with advertising by really stimulating those relationships. Um, and if the fundamental heart of everything that the organization did was kind of based on data, right? Now, one of the things that I noticed really early on when I joined is that they had the most creative and extraordinary people that I'd ever come across. It had a culture that was so rich and diverse. You had people from so many different backgrounds with skills and capabilities. And there was a real hunger you know, to, to make this mission come true. Now, as you can imagine, an organization like that becomes successful really quickly, right? This was an organization that was running all of Google's digital advertising globally. Um, but what was happening is that because it was scaling so fast, it was really struggling to keep up with hiring and the demands that that brought on it. So what I realized, my legs were kind of pulled back down to ground and that actually what a lot of people were doing day to day was highly repetitive manual tasks. And all of that incredible potential that was there was being unused. Now what that meant is that you had people that weren't feeling that same passion and drive that they had in the past. Um, and that was having a real impact on the culture. At about the same time, um, about a year before I would joined, there was, a, there was a initiative to start addressing the technology challenges, right? So from day one, Essence had been innovating um, in the space. But as it was growing, uh, it needed technology that could scale with it. Uh, so I joined at probably the peak of inflated expectations, right? Uh, people were really excited about what was happening, but I realized very quickly that we were on a very slippery slope downhill. Um, one of the things that uh, I'd, what I experienced was is that actually users were stopping using our technology, right? Because they were unreliable. Uh, clients were actually starting to leave because the promises that had been made, um, we couldn't deliver upon. And actually, we were losing people. Uh, so I was there with a couple of people left because it was such a tough time that they were experiencing because of the challenges that we were having. So it goes without saying that it was a, it was a really, really hard time. Now, I took a step back and was like, what is actually going on here? What is at the root of this problem? Because day by day, I would come in and I'd be tackling fires and be bringing my leadership team along, and we'd be, we'd be trying to be on top of it, but it felt like we were never making any progress. And what I found was a, a really interesting insight into the culture. Um, there was this, this, um, this belief that building it ourselves was the right thing to do in every situation. There was this um, cultural norm that you know, there was no other technology out there that could actually help this business because what it's doing has not been solved before. Uh, and there was a real pride and ethos around this. And uh, you know, I looked at it and I said, well, I can totally see why this is the case. You know, when Essence was innovating, there weren't any pieces of technology that could help do what they were doing. But this was a different context. They were trying to scale. This was now an organization that was 2,500 people, not 500. Um, and so I went on a campaign, a campaign trying to educate people around the, the benefits of buying technology, bringing in partners that had solved these problems. Because Essence was never going to be in the business of collecting data, storing data, and making that data available for people to use, right? 
where the real IP was, was understanding how to navigate the complex data sets that exist within advertising and how to make those connections that enable people to find real insight. Um, and that's when the partnership with Looker uh, kind of kicked off. Uh, we started engaging heavily with them. We'd also been engaging heavily with Google. Um, and so, you know, when I heard about Google and Looker coming together, it was music to my ears. Um, but it, the partnership took us from a point where we were on the back foot, right? I talked about it. We were losing people, we were losing clients, uh, and we had a, a real morale issue. And now we're on the front foot, right? We are leading the way in terms of technology in WPP, um, and we've had incredible success with our clients. Uh, and so it was only through that partnership in working with Google and Looker that made that possible. So what is it that we, we actually did, um, or what do we do? So we actually build products uh, that assist people to find deep insights, right? Uh, and the way that we tackled this is we actually took Looker and we put it in the center of everything that we do. So I'm a real geek about Looker. Um, I love the compiler, I love LookML, uh, and I love what that enabled us to do. So uh, Lloyd talked about this, this latency, right? Latency was the number one thing that I was looking at, the reduction in latency between the data being available and it being in someone's hand. Um, and the fact that there was an online developer environment where people could write LookML, that meant that we could push it outside of our developer team into the business so that they could manage changes themselves. So what you see here is you see kind of four examples of interfaces that people might be engaging with, right? You've obviously got the, the Looker dashboard interface, um, but we've got a financial reconciliation application as well. We've got an application where we walk customers through um, the performance of their uh, campaigns on a week-by-week -week basis. And the, the fact that we put this in the center has enabled us to build new products faster, and it gets uh, people to deeper insights quicker. Um, so all in all, it's, it's been a real transformation for us. Now, one of the things that um, I hear a lot when I, when I talk to, to people outside of an organization, they ask me, what are the things that you learned? What is the, what is the one thing um, that you can take away from it? Um, and I'll kind of go back to the beginning of what I said about this presentation. It's about people, and it's about unleashing people's potential. Uh, and it's not just your developers, it's not the, your users, it's not just your accountants, it's everybody that you're interacting with, right? And I'll, I'll, I'll ask you to just keep one thing in mind, because it definitely has got us unstuck at certain points. You know, technology is a great assistant, right? Um, and one of the things that I found when I was talking to, to people in the business is that, you know, there was this feeling that data was the enemy of creativity, right? And this is a false dichotomy, because they're kind of both one and the same thing. And, you know, it's not that data powers creativity or that data is the lifeblood of innovation. People are, right? People are creative. People are innovative. Um, and the one mantra that I always have is about hearts and minds. You've got to win the hearts and minds of your people. And so hearts needs freedom. Hearts need freedom to dream freedom to create, freedom to have ideas. Minds need data to pressure test your creativity. They need to refine your ideas. Um, and they need to make sure that those dreams can come true. So what I ask of you is the next time that you're in a tricky situation, just think about your people and how you can help them unleash their potential. Thank you.